Hey everyone, I'm Roger Palomino with Houston Media Source. Tonight we're at a very special event, the sneak peek for The Doll Factory, which is directed by Stephen Wolf. We have a talented cast and crew members that are here to talk to us a little bit about what that experience was like being on such a wonderful film set. So let's check out what they have to say. And uh, I just want to start off by asking you the process for this film. Like, how was it like in its initial stages, and what drew you to this particular project? Um, actually, the initial idea it was me and a bunch of friends just kind of goofing around, funny enough. And uh, I don't know, it was just kind of like it just it, it was a, such a goofy, over the top idea. It kind of it kind of just kept with us. And then when that when I took the college class where we had to make a fake movie trailer. Um, I was like, hey, this is a perfect idea. You know, we've been talking, but joking about it forever. So let's make it a reality. And uh, one thing led to another. We did the fake trailer. It went over really well. And um, it turned into this feature. So that, that's how it came about. Okay, great. As far as, like, casting is concerned, you had a lot of wonderful actors. Uh, how was that process like? Uh, did you know a lot of them personally, or did you have to go through a casting agency? Um, some of the key actors we knew. Uh, the main actor, Justin Herman. I had been doing film with him since I was a little kid, so naturally I wanted him in the lead role. We just work really well together, and I wrote the, the role for him to really excel in. And uh, a few of the other leads I had known previously, we had worked on previous projects, and uh, so the, the rest of them, yes, we went through an agency to cast the rest of the cast, which all worked out perfectly. I'm really happy with how all that happened. Yeah. And I'm here with producer and actor Andy Palmer from The Doll Factory and I just want to tell you Andy I loved your character. <laughs> Great job. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> You bet. So a lot of people that are watching probably don't know a lot about the process as far as like a producer. Mm -hmm. uh, we are familiar with the process as an actor. So what can you tell us about your role in this um, film as far as like the production side? Um, well, basically all I really did was provide the money and everything and hired the right people. You know, there's an old saying, it's just like, you know, it's the producer that accepts the awards even though really all they do is accept phone calls even though it's like, well, that's not all they do. They got to go out and find the money. They got to get people to sign contracts, you know. But I had our unit production manager and line producer Carlos Tovar to walk me through that and teach me so that I got to see it for what it all was and to and to actually experience the process so that hopefully next time around I won't be entirely uh, dependent upon someone else to you know take care of it for me and tell me what to do. Yeah, exactly. Right on. And uh, one thing I discovered too, interviewing a lot of people on the production side as well as acting, is that they have to wear many hats. Uh, what was your experience like as uh, the actor in this film? Well, it, it was really tough. There were a lot of demands. Um, I was on set every day, whether it, I had a call time as a, and I needed to be in character or not. Um, so sometimes I'd go run errands when I wasn't, but on days that I did need to be um, in character, honestly, it, you, you got to learn to stay out of the way as an executive producer and let people do stuff. And also when you're an actor, you kind of just have to hand the hat over to people you trust and do your performance. Um, and, and it's kind of tough because like, I, I did go over my character, I did plan a lot of things, I didn't get to put as much into it as I would have liked until I actually got to the set. And that was a bit tough, but you know, thanks to you know Carlos Tovar, UPM, and everyone else on the set, you know, I was able to trust them enough to wear that hat while I, you know, got into character and performed. Mm -hmm. It was a very fabulous film. I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed uh, all the performances. Now, if you could choose one memorable event from that experience, what would you uh, remember? Like to mention? Honestly. Uh, I have to say, my favorite scene was uh, the uh, sword fight. You know, just th there were so many things that were challenging and, and frustrating at times, but it was a lot of fun. It, at times, demanding physically, but you know, it's like a boyhood dream come true. And then you kind of get past that. You do the, the fight scene, then you see it, and you're like, "Wow, that has actually turned out pretty well." You know, see yourself fighting and everything. But you know, 
and so that would be my favorite for this film, but I have moved on to really liking getting into the character and, uh, and performing, so I'm really looking forward to the next project I do where I get to really play a very dramatic character. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if you could give advice to other Houston actors out there that uh, want to do this and perhaps don't know how to get started, what, what would you tell them? Honestly, uh, if you want to get into film, the only thing I can really tell you is to network. I cannot stress how important that is. Networking is something that you need to do from the time you start all the way up until you become like an A-list professional. Everyone does that. Brian Cranston does that. You know, they all meet each other. So keep networking because you never know where it's going to lead to. I actually got in the only reason this film happened is because I worked on a film uh, prior to this called Midnight Abyss I got cast in it by Stephen Wolf I met him through an actress friend that I took an acting class with years prior so I met her let her borrow this book didn't speak to her for like a year or so went back to go get my book and then she was you know auditioning for this film called Midnight Abyss she recommended me you know went and worked on it met Steven and then Doll Factory happened and I was able to come on as a producer so you know it, it's you never know where things are gonna lead so always network if, if you learn nothing else network okay absolutely words to live by thank you Andy thank you very much And I'm here at the Alamo Draft House with Ryan Avalis, the first AD for the Doll Factory. Now tell us what that experience was like for you. Uh, if anything, I would say that it was hectic, but it could have been a lot more so, given that it was an indie production, but we spent a lot of time in pre-production mm -hmm. and made it a point to make our shot lists as clean as possible. Steven did an excellent job on that, and he also did an excellent job producing for his first time as well. And Given that, there was some leaning out that we needed to do so that we couldn't do a, a, a jib shot or a dolly jib shot like in every shot because we had to make some of those, you know, nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. But with that said, uh, you know, given difficulties or anything else, long days, shorter turnovers, those 23 days of, of principal photography, I mean, granted there were a couple pickup days too, were grueling by the end, but we all walked out knowing that we shot everything that we needed. It just needed to be stitched together. Most of us, I think, saw it in our mind's eye. So it was beautiful to see it tonight and actually see it materialize, come to fruition. Yeah, absolutely, and you're with a great team. So how did you come about with uh, finding this team for the Doll Factory? Uh, matter of fact, uh, Steven and Andy found me uh, more than anything else. And from that point on, I brought on Carlos as our unit production manager and he, took the ticket and picked up where I left off and have brought them to where they are today uh, and a much masterful job given the budget and given the time that they've spent on it. It's been really good. And I'm here at the Alamo Draft House in Vintage Park. We just saw the Doll Factory with a very talented actor, Chris, uh, Chris Fender. And uh, tell us what was um, that process like as far as like playing your role because you had to play yourself both young and older. Uh, yeah, um, actually, I shot uh, most of the older stuff first. I think actually my young self was in between all of it. So we literally shot most of the. Um, older Bart character at first. In fact, my first uh, my first scene I ever shot was actually my last scene in the movie. So the, the last of, of what you see of me in the film is actually my first day of shooting. And I'm kind of glad I looked a lot better than I felt I did because I wasn't really used to, this is my first movie, so I had no idea going into it that I was like, oh my god, we got to, you know, it was 12 hours a day. So I was going in at 6 p.m. coming, uh, getting off at 6 a.m., driving all the way home because I live, uh, very south of Houston and everything was usually downtown or north of Houston so it was an hour away so um, but uh, yeah we shot uh, we shot the young thing in between and uh, I can't figure out what I was could say it I'm sorry no uh, no worries I'm sorry about that um, but your question was uh, what was that like preparing the role um, well uh, 
I kind of started building the character up while we were writing, or while Stephen was writing, I was just kind of throwing ideas at him. You know, he kind of came to a lot of his friends, and then we were like, hey, let's like, get some ideas together, before it became like the real thing, and then like he kind of really took control of the script and really made something big. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, the idea for Bart was just kind of like this old, you know, scruffy, kind of like tired old man, and you know, he didn't really care. That's kind of like why when I'm young, I have a really snappy, really well put together, very, you know, specific uniform, like I really cared, and then when I'm older, I'm really just kind of tired and burnt out, and I just really don't care, everything's just kind of loose, but, um, you know, Bart was just kind of like a really, really uh, interesting character to play, especially, you know, for my first movie, because I wasn't, uh, I don't think I really was as prepared as I hoped I was, but I, I think it really came out really, really great, you know, doing the voice like that of the old man and keeping that, like, constant. That was the thing I was really afraid of most was just keeping it constant because it's easy when you're sitting down and doing a voice like that, and that's how I usually practice. But when I was, like, you know, working 12 hours and, like, just constantly tired, like, my first night I was, like, taking naps, and then by the end of it I was doing much, much better. But trying to keep that voice up when you're tired and constantly running and running around and like trying to throw yourself backwards to fall out of the doll factory like using your weight to swing open the silo doors that was really really crazy but um uh i think i kind of trailed off a little bit but you're uh, no actually that was great uh you you covered a lot of ground as far as like you had a lot of um input from the director because he basically drafted it on on um paper as far as like script and you got to build that character uh what were some of your influences as far as like building a character like this my influences um i knew uh i tried to keep the character in tune with what i uh, understood the movie was going to be like and this movie is a very over-the-top kind of silly homage to like 80s B movies like I always thought of like Night of the Creeps and stuff like that mm -hmm. and so uh, I kind of tried to keep him like very very comical uh, and I kind of based a lot of inspiration off of Dennis Hopper's character from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 I thought he was like a really really funny over-the-top kind of lovable guy and uh, the voice I think was kind of uh, geared more towards Gary Busey than Dennis Hopper though so he's kind of got this weird funny you know southern accent but he's you know really over the top and crazy and angry like uh, Dennis Hopper's character was in uh, Texas Chainsaw 2 and that's kind of where I got the idea from uh, Bart for. Okay great now um, after this film uh, what's next for you in the future? Um, I graduated from college uh, last semester I'm getting some basics out of the way but uh, I want to pursue a career in film and uh, some circumstances kind of came up uh, recently, and um, I think I may have gotten a foot in the door in a really, really nice uh, university in Florida. So I think uh, once I get enough money together, I think I'm going to be shooting off to Florida to, excuse me, study film over there. Um, that's, that's about what I got planned here uh, for me. Okay. As far as like studying film, does that mean a, a f possible future as a director or producer? Yeah, acting was always a really fun thing I, that I loved to do ever since I was young, but uh, when I was in high school I started kind of exploring uh, other interests, and uh, game design was one of them, but directing was something that really, really caught my eye, and, I, and over the years I really uh, enjoyed studying film in a different way than just what the audience or an actor would look at it, more of like from the director's side, and so uh, I think directing is also like a big interest for me, so I'm going to be going down to study uh, directing and film, but I'm still going to be trying to look for more acting parts and stuff like that along the way. But uh, going to school, I'll have to focus mostly on directing there. Okay. Well, uh, congratulations on the film and uh, on your acceptance at that university in Florida. Thanks a lot. And I'm here at the Alamo Draft House with Andrew Olson, who uh, was a gaffer on the Doll Factory and responsible for making it look very well lit and beautiful. Uh, what can you tell us about the process of getting that ready for this film? Well, we were, when we were filming, it was a little bit cooler and it was very rainy, so we had to set up all our lights that were coming through the windows and whatnot, um, you know, being, co being covered up from the rain. Um, it was all about making the lighting a little bit more dynamic and the way we had um, deep fall offs as much as we can for in shadows and things so we were doing a lot more of that and not um, not things more evenly lit giving a, a little more dimension to some things and um, and mood to the to the, the scenes um, we created a 
we had like one of our main lights we had in the you might have seen there's like a, um, a factory type area well we set up uh, a light boomed out over our characters quite often and we seen it off it kind of looked like a giant eye but it was about about this big and it would um just this little half moon sh half um ball shaped glow that we would put over over our subjects and to light them evenly but uh so we did that a lot for probably a good um good 20 percent of the film we, we did a lot of that so it was used a lot of times but um other than that we would also used a lot of party gels on um especially there was like some halloween halloween party and uh so creating a little more moods with with different colors in the, in this space and then um what else um we it was all at night so then we had a little more control over you know didn't have to deal with the sun mm -hmm. so that helped a lot um besides that it was you know just trying to try to make it work in our crazy time frame that we had to do it so and that was it for the sneak peek at the doll factory here at the beautiful Alamo Draft House in Vintage Park in North Houston. I'm Roger Palomino reporting for Houston Media Source. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.